Okay, in this video, I'm gonna show you one of my favorite lighting techniques for interior spaces like this, just to get this kind of like, I don't really know what you call it, but I guess divine type lighting, dramatic type, I don't know, I don't really know, whatever this is. So I'll show you three different uh, examples of just renders I've done recently using this exact technique. And I like this because it looks cool sometimes, but it's also actually one of the easiest, probably the easiest way to light um, your render. So. I think it, it works best in like enclosed spaces. So as you can see, these are all the same type of setup where it's like big enclosed, vast space with light coming through the top. Um, and yeah, let's just, let's just jump into this. So here is the blend file of this one. And if I take out this light at the top, uh, so I've, I've, show, I've talked about this before where I just use a lot of the times very few lights or if not one light. So this is that. So if I take this out, if I hide this point light, or is it actually a spotlight, uh, it's pitch black. So there's nothing in here except this. Uh, and that's doing everything. So if I just move this around, you can see this thing right here is just doing all the lighting. But there's a, a bit more to it than just throwing in a spotlight and then it looks good straight away. Like you have to do some other stuff to get this to work properly. So hopefully I can show you that here. Let's look at what else is going on. First of all, let's look at the actual settings here and then I'll show you some other stuff that's happening that's making this actually look good. So the power is pretty high. Um, I guess I should mention first, I'm in cycles. So in EV, this can work too. You might have to use like the irradiance volume and then, or I've heard of some add-ons like uh, the SSGI or whatever it's called, like screen space global illumination for EV. I don't know if that's still around, but I, in the past that was a thing to get like that's basically like the, uh, you see how on the walls here, it's like the lights kind of bouncing off of them, this like bright surface and then lighting up the walls here. You don't really get that in Eevee, but uh, in cycles, you just naturally get it. So that's why I'm using it here. The light settings are, this thing is just turned up bright. The number doesn't really matter. It's just bright enough to where it's like very bright. Like if I move this, it's pretty far away, but if I move it closer, you can see like, this is a pretty bright light. Like if I switch this to point light, and just kind of drop it here. Uh, you can see that like this is very, very bright. I don't even know what this is, 934,000 watts. That's the light bulb here. And then if you switch it to spot, then it's just a bit more directional than a point light. Same thing with like area lights. I just, you just get too much um, spread on it, I find. So that's why I like spotlights for this kind of thing at least. And what else is going on here? So it's um, on, the, on the actual light, move this down on the actual light there is so it's the color is just white saturation on zero sometimes I'll make it like a little bit blue but uh, that doesn't matter that much other than like what matters more here is the radius of the light you choose so you can see it's turned up actually quite big it's at almost a uh, one meter radius and that means it's gonna, it's gonna be pretty soft coming down here like if I switch it all the way down to zero you can see we're starting to get like really defined like harsh uh, like the shadows have very hard edges and sometimes that's cool. But in this case, I just wanted a bit, you know, a bit more softer of a look. So it's turned up to somewhere around there. And then another thing I like to do with these spotlights a lot is turn up this blend. So you can see it's like by default, you'll get this kind of very cone type shape. Um, I'll make this really clear if I turn these down. Yeah, you can see how if the radius is pretty small and then the blend is also small you just get this very defined spotlight shape. And, you know, when you see people try and replicate this, one mistake they make sometimes is just having this very like uh, beam looking light. And I, I like to try and avoid that just because it, it just, it's less obvious that it's just, you know, one spotlight that you just threw in there. It looks more like, it almost looks like a concert light or like a, if you were lighting somebody up on stage, like it's a spotlight, it's pretty clear what is happening here. But if you turn up this blend and then turn up the radius a bit, this blend is basically just the, the kind of gradient fall off you get from the middle, like the brightest point to the, uh, like it's more of a fade out from the, the brightest point of the light to the uh, darkest point. Uh, and that's pretty much it for the actual light settings. But let's talk about what else is going on here for this to actually work properly, because you might try this and you might dial in the exact same settings here and it might still look Bad. So there's a few other factors that go into making this actually work with your scene. So 
the first thing is where you put the light itself. So that's pretty obvious. If you move the light to a different spot, it's going to have, you know, it's going to be shining from a different place and it's going to cast different shadows and it's going to affect how everything looks, right? So it's, it's hard to give um, a repeatable formula for you to like, like an easy step for you to follow to get, like to find the right position to put the light in. But um, what I can tell you is it's just, it's just kind of trial and error and um, just moving it around until it kind of matches whatever type of lighting you had in your head. Uh, and you know, you can use references for this kind of thing, like go and look at other people's work or other photos or other cool things that have a similar type of lighting and just try your best to replicate the type of lighting setup that's going on there. And then that will like give you ideas for the kind of things you should try in your trial and error process. So, you know, I didn't just add a light and then put it here and then instantly it looked exactly how I wanted it to. I had to move it around and try different angles. And um, I've, I've showed this before, but I'll, I'll show this tip again. One thing I like to do sometimes is switch the pivot point to cursor. So you can see if I put the cursor, like shift right click to move this dot around, put that thing somewhere in the middle. And then you can see if I don't have this on, when I rotate the light, it'll like rotate from the light bulb. But if I switch this to 3D cursor up here, the uh, transform pivot point. That means when I rotate now, it'll rotate actually from wherever the cursor is. Um, so that's handy for just, if I know that I want the light to be pointing at the center here, but I wanna try moving it to different angles, that's a really easy way if you just go to like front view or something and just kind of move it around like this or go to any other angle, just kind of mess around with it and just see what might look better. Uh, so that's a very easy way to just quickly go through that trial and error process. The other thing that's very important is actually where you put other objects in your scene that are going to affect either the shadows or the bounce lighting or just how the light interacts with everything else. Let me show you what I mean by that. So actually, if you look at where the light is here, it's actually going, it's kind of intersecting with this cluster of stuff right here. Like this object is actually in the way. And there's a couple other things that are in the way of this, like all these floating hands and stuff up here. So if I take out all this stuff around here, just see what this looks like. If I just get rid of all the stuff that's casting any shadows, uh, if I just kind of take that out, that makes a big, a big difference there. Um, like having, having all the stuff in the way here does make it feel a lot less like a spotlight and just more like natural light that would naturally be here. I don't know why it just feels better to have some kind of shadows and stuff blocking it versus like, again, it feels a bit more like, I don't know, like a stage light, like um, very spotlighty. Uh, so I find this is often just too much and like not very nice to look at. Sometimes it looks cool, but a lot of the times I find it looks much better just throwing really any object you want in the way a little bit just to cast some more interesting shadows. And then that's how you get this kind of like God ray type effect. A lot of people have asked about that. It's just like, if you have a smaller radius, that'll be a bit more clear. Um, and that's how you just get like these crisp shadows coming down through there. One thing I forgot to mention with this technique is you want to be using volumetrics. This makes a massive difference. So if I just hide this, um, yeah, you can see what that's doing. So just turn on, what, how I do it is I just add a cube, scale up the cube to cover the entire scene, and then set the, if you go to uh, this orange square tab, go down to this thing, viewport display, change the display as, uh, instead of textured, because it's going to be like this, that's really annoying. Just switch it to bounds, and now it's just out of the way. And then on that cube, you just add a volume scatter node or a principled volume node. Um, here's the settings I'm using for that, nothing else. Density is like pretty low, and then anisotropy is turned up a little bit. You don't have to use these exact settings, but just sit, like keep the density somewhat low, keep the anisotropy somewhat high, and you'll get this type of setup. Um, and then I also, in cycles, in this case, have the volume bounces turned up. I don't need it at 32, like two is gonna look the same. But if you switch it to zero, you will get a different look. As soon as you increase it past zero or one, then you'll get a more like natural kind of look. Sometimes it looks cool to have it on zero because everything that's outside of the direct volume or uh, the direct like light that's going through the volume is gonna be a little bit darker. Sometimes that's cool, but I've been finding recently, it looks really nice to have this volume uh, light bounces turned up. And that way it's just the light can scatter a little bit more throughout the volume and it just gives it a softer kind of look. 
I really like that. Um, so there's my settings for volumetrics and that goes with all the other renders that I'm showing in this video. They all, they're all using a similar volume setup to this. Sometimes what I do too is just take a plane. So if I just take this, block all of the light with it and then just create a new texture on the plane and then just take, uh, whoops, and then just take a noise and use that to drive the alpha. So then we just get kind of randomized shadows. Sometimes it all, I also just take a, a model of something complex like a tree or like just anything with a bunch of uh, variation in like the, any, any complex model and then use that as like a, a shadow caster. Uh, so you can see if I drop this thing in here, let's turn up the scale. So it's just a regular plane and then the noise here is driving the transparency or the alpha. And if I just take this up to something like this, uh, detail doesn't matter that much in this case. Now, if I make this like really, a really thin radius, uh, you can see we're starting to get a bit more of those. If I can make this a bit more intense, let's turn the scale down a little, bring this back in. Yeah. So now we're getting like, we're kind of forcing those shadows in there without using uh, any like specific object. It's just kind of like random shadows. Sometimes it's fun to animate that too, even like if you switch it to 4D and then change the W, you can get like a really just cool, like it almost looks like it's underwater type, like a little bit like that, or just some weird thing is happening. I don't know, it's kind of cool to do that sometimes. Uh, and then, like I said, the smaller you have the radius on the light here, the more pronounced that effect is going to be, just because the smaller the light, the harsher those shadows are going to be. So I don't usually go too small, but if I really want that, God ray type effect, it will like narrow it down a little bit. And that's not the, uh, that's not the spot size, like how wide this thing is, but it's the actual size of like the, the uh, light bulb. Like you can see when I change this, it's this thing right here. So the, the bigger this is, the softer it's gonna be, the softer it's gonna be, and then the smaller it is, it's gonna be more harsh. Okay, I think that's enough for this one. Let's look at some other examples of where I've used this technique. So I'll just open up some other files here. Okay, so this one is a bit of a mess. I know there's just shit everywhere, so sorry about that. Just ignore, like, what happened here was that there was some, I made clusters of, like, pillars and stuff, and then I just set the pillars to display as bounds here, so it's not, like, it looks really complicated and just, like, a bunch of craziness. I promise it's not anything crazy, though. It's just regular models in a cluster, duplicated a bunch of times, and then some of those models in those clusters are just set to display as bounds. Uh, that's over here, viewport display bounds. So it just makes it a box. Um, and then there's particles and just crap everywhere. So ignore that, but let me show you the lighting setup because the lighting again is actually very, very simple here. So you guessed it, it's the same setup. One spotlight, if I take it away, it's pretty much pitch black. There is some light here and that's from this thing at the bottom. So there's actually no floor in this one. So I thought it looked cool to just have a little bit of just something else to light up the bottom. This is not really doing that much. So it's adding like another 5% to the quality or something. So you probably even less. This is not really important here. I'm not even gonna talk about that, but just know that like, you don't always have to use just one light and then never use any more. Like you can have fun with it and just try different things. So in this one I am using two, but this one isn't doing that much. But let's talk about the main one up here because this is what's lighting up pretty much everything. So it's the same thing. If we look at the uh, power, 1 million or 1.2 million watts on this light bulb. Um, and then the radius is even higher on this one. I think the last one was just under one meter. This one's four meters, so it's even softer lighting. So if I take that down, not too much of a difference, but I just found that the shadows were just, you know, the higher that radius is, the, the softer and, and more like, yeah, just easier the shadows are gonna be to look at. Um, so I, I kind of wanted this to feel like, I don't know, if you're in a cave, and there was some, like an overcast sky and the light was just kind of just coming down through that. You wouldn't, like you probably wouldn't be seeing direct sunlight if you were inside of a cave. You'd probably just be seeing like a bit of the sky. And that would mean that like the opening would be a bit more of like a, you know, if you imagine how wide that cave opening would be, it'd probably be more than like one meter. It'd probably be like a, a decent sized opening to get this kind of thing. Um, at least that's what I was thinking when I made this. So that's why the, the radius is a little bit bigger because I wanted to kind of replicate that soft type of lighting that you would, that I'm, that I'm kind of imagining for this place. Uh, I don't think there's anything actually in the way casting too many shadows in this one. Like if I look around here, yeah, it's like 
just pretty much straight down onto it. Oh, this looks really cool from this angle. I might have to do another render of that. Actually, that looks really sick. But yeah, it's just, there's nothing in the way, like casting shadows on this one. It's just, I don't know, same thing. I added a light, moved it around a bunch of times, trial and error, just what works best, and then landed on something like this. This one, the color is a little bit cool. Like you can see, it's saturation is at 0.2. If I take that down, it's like, I don't know, it just felt too cold and just depressing. So it's a little bit cooler just for something else. And then same thing here, blend is not even all the way up, but somewhere there. Um, yeah, that's it for that one. Pretty much the same setup, just a little bit different settings. And you know, with these settings, I would say don't copy this, like don't just replicate what I'm doing here. Like try the ideas that I'm talking about, like try increasing the blend or increasing the radius or increasing the power, but just see what works best for the type of scene that you're making. Like it's gonna be different depending on what you make. So if you copy the exact settings, it probably won't, uh, it might work fine, but it probably won't be the exact right settings that would fit the thing you're making. So just experiment and try, try different stuff. Okay, I'm gonna go to the last one. Uh, let's just see here, this one here. So these, all three renders that I'm showing here are all pretty much the same. They're kind of honestly the same render, just with different objects. Like it's ca the camera's low to the ground, looking up at some vast but enclosed space, and then there's a spotlight at the top shining through. You know, using this thing, you can actually make a lot of different renders, which are all actually kind of the same techniques. Uh, so let's look at this one. This one, again, this one's actually 2.5 million watts, so even brighter than the last two. And this one's very blue, so I wanted it to be like icy, cold kind of color. Uh, radius is up at, again, almost one meter, but not quite. And then our blend is all the way turned up. And for, for this one, it doesn't really matter that much. You can't even see the edge of where that blend is, but I just thought it looked cool, so I just kept it there. And if you notice with this one, the spot size is a lot lower, so the more you turn this up, the closer it's going to be to an area light where it's just a 180 degree radius. This is pretty much exactly the same as what an area light's doing. But if you bring this down, you get that very uh, directional lighting where it's just lighting up one like singular direction. And that's really nice for just if you want to go very dramatic and say like, okay, I want this thing in the middle right here to be very bright and all the attention goes there and then everything else is gonna be a lot darker. That's where this technique really is just a lot of fun to play with. So you can see the more narrow this spot size is, the harder it's gonna be and the more I think trial and error you're gonna to have to go through to get the right, uh, the exact right setup. Uh, just because, I don't know, you're kind of working with a beam of light versus, uh, 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 I don't even know what else you'd call it, more like an area light. And that just means it's gonna be, it's kind of like the, the sniper of lighting. So it's, you know, it's, you gotta be a bit more precise with it, I guess. I don't know if that's a good analogy, but whatever. Um, yeah. And same thing here, there's like kind of stuff in the way blocking what's happening with this light. So there is, if I take out all this shit here, uh, let's go even more like this thing here. There's a lot of stuff in the way that's kind of casting all these nice shadows. And let's take off this thing too, even. Yeah, you can see if I just take off this entire ceiling, it's just whatever that is. But having just all these different objects layered on top of each other in the way and like trees and just these uh, wooden things, that just makes some really just interesting shadows to look at. And uh, it makes it, again, feel less like just um, whatever that is, just weird lighting and just more cool like divine god ray type stuff going on here. I wouldn't say this is necessary to have objects in the way here, but it's just another thing you can do to make it more interesting sometimes. And then one thing that's really nice about using this is you get actually very nice, uh, like indirect lighting. So what I mean is if I, since this is so bright, it, like a lot of light is hitting the main thing here, this main object. And then that means that is kind of illuminating the rest of the room around it. And I don't know, I think it just looks really nice having just cool, like good indirect lighting where it's just, I don't know, just gives it a nice vibe. Hopefully that gives you some ideas of how to light uh, like this type of scene. And you know, for different types of scenes, you're gonna wanna use different lighting setups, like an outdoor daytime scene. This is not gonna work. And like, you know, it depends on what you're making, but 
for enclosed spaces where you want like this divine type lighting. This is my favorite technique. Um, and yeah, so just go experiment and just try different stuff and have fun with it. And you'll, you'll find out like different lighting setups that work with different types of scenes. And maybe I'll do more on like how to light daytime scenes or how to light like cyberpunk scenes or I don't know. I've already done one video on lighting, but it's pretty old. So I could do more of those. In the description, there is a link to a course and a bunch of asset packs. If that's something you're interested in, you can click that if you want, you don't have to. Uh, other than that, hopefully that was useful and I will see you around, bye. Oh, and subscribe, that's important.